So if you didn't watch the first three parts, here's a quick recap. I bought an old Honda CRV and took a 10,000 mile solo road trip for two months. Starting from LA, I drove east through Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico. Saw a bunch of beautiful rocks, went to the Monument Valley, had a lunch in Navajo Nation, read my favorite chapters at George R.R. R. Martin's bookstore. And now you are good to go. If you want to support this channel in future videos, you can subscribe, comment, or like. So the YouTube algorithm will recommend this video to more people. But no pressure. Back to the story. Since I had been driving pretty intensely for the past few days, I decided to spend three nights at Albuquerque because I know this place has a lot to offer. And unsurprisingly, I had the greatest Mexican fajitas and Monroe's. I wish I know more words to describe my feelings at the fajitas tastiness other than delicious, hearty, tender, and unique. But I don't. I spent some afternoons walking around the old town that dates back to 1706. Learned a lot about the local Pueblo culture, which has flourished in the American Southwest for thousands of years. Went to some shops and galleries and had a lot of fun with this creepy app called Reface. It was quite popular back then and I was very surprised when I found myself miraculously turned into a bunch of hot chicks. Deep learning never fails to surprise me. On the last day, I drove to a mountain nearby, did some hiking, met a lovely couple, flew my drone a few times, and enjoyed the sunset peacefully. I love traveling alone, and when people ask me questions like, have you ever felt lonely when you travel? I honestly don't know what to say to them, because I don't think I understand what loneliness is, and the only thing I know for sure is that I love going on solo trips. And I believe it's the only activity that allows me to experience what I call true freedom. That being said, goodbye Albuquerque. The next day, I started driving south towards the westernmost point of Texas, El Paso. Being the border town on US-Mexico border and New Mexico-Texas border, El Paso is complicated. On one hand, it shares a culture and history with its south of the border neighbor, Ciudad Juarez. And on the other hand, El Paso plays various roles when it comes to geopolitics. And according to what I had read from the internet, I better El Paso up before going there. Whatever that means. But before all this fun stuff and before leaving New Mexico, I'd like to make a quick stop at the one only White Sands National Park. I didn't exactly go inside the park because it's closed due to the pandemic, but since the dunes were enormous, a lot of the white sand actually got spilled on the side of the road. And like all these curious drivers ahead of me, I stopped my car as well. And with some help from my drone, I did manage to see the magic inside. I don't believe I had ever seen anything half so beautiful. It was clean, 100% milky white, impeccable, flawless, and just perfect. I was told later that not too far away from where I was standing, a desert known as Jornada del Moruto was where the very first atomic bomb was detonated. It was of the same design as the bomb dropped on Nagasaki, Japan in 1945. Hundreds of thousands of people died of it. After the visit, I had lunch at IHOP in a small town called Armogordo. I couldn't really say I'm a big fan of pancakes, but those pancakes in my mouth were as smooth as a baby's butt, as sweet as the first raindrop on Sahara Desert, and as memorable as a heartbreak. I enjoyed the meal immensely and took a long nap in my car. Despite having to suffer 10 minutes of the absolutely horrendous smell coming from the nearby dairy farms, I entered the great state of Texas safe and sound. El Paso was much hotter than Albuquerque. I could hardly handle it. In fact, the moment I stepped out of my car, I could feel my whole body being slapped by the sun. My Airbnb was in an old neighborhood. It was quite cheap, but it was also quite sketchy. I spent about 20 minutes just to locate where my room was. The owner drew this illustration to navigate me, but I have to say his drawing wasn't very helpful. There is certainly some room for improvement, 
So here is the front of the Airbnb. I need to go through this gate, go through this gate, squeeze myself through this gap, make a right, unlock another gate, and finally unlock my room. Since El Paso was way too hot when the sun was out, I didn't go outside very often. Only when the sun was setting, I took the scenic drive overlook where I could see the Rio Grande and the Mexican City and see the Juanas. If not for the cold wind, I would certainly go with it. After having too much homemade pasta in the last few days, I decided to go to a fancier place for my last meal at El Paso. It was a steakhouse with a very self-explanatory name, the State Line because part of it is in Texas, and part of it is in New Mexico. It truly is where the Tex meets the Max, like the food. I had a great dinner there. Three kinds of sausages and those delicious beans did a great job entertaining me, and I was ready to move on. My second stop in Texas was going to be San Antonio, until I realized how large Texas was. If I wished to drive from El Paso directly to San Antonio, I would have to drive non-stop without any food or bathroom breaks for 9 hours. Just to give you a simple idea of how far 9 hours of driving can take you to, if you drive south from Munich, you will be in Rome 9 hours later, crossing Germany, Liechtenstein, and Italy. But here in Texas, you are barely halfway through, and that was obviously not practical. So I zoomed in on the area between these two cities, trying to find a place to stay for the night. And that's how I found this little town with only 3,027 residents, called Sonora. San Antonio is 3 hours away from here, and my driving time from El Paso was reduced to 5 hours, which was something I could handle. Five hours may seem long and tedious, but driving to me is really a form of meditation, and it helps me to enter the flow state. I could be fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of driving. And this kind of complete absorption transforms my sense of time. As a result, five hours felt like 50 minutes to me. It may sound lunatic to you, but I'm not making this up. I checked in Motel 6 Sonora in the afternoon, went to a grocery store for some veggie and beers, and when I was checking out, the staff wanted to see my ID, so I gave it to him, and he immediately said, Oh, you were born on Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. I was taken aback by this guy in front of me, and I asked, How did you know that? He looked at me and said, Because I was born the same day, 44 years older than you. You're my birthday toy. We both laughed, hugged, and shook hands. Who would have known I would meet a guy who is exactly 44 years older than me at a grocery store in a town that I randomly chose to stay? This is what I love about life, a series of intersecting lives and incidents, out of anyone's control. I should probably stop this part of the story here, this one is quite long right now. The next episode will cover the rest of my adventures in Texas and hopefully some Louisiana stories. Thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel, subscribe, comment, and like would be very helpful. If you have any questions, you can either leave a comment or hit me up on my Instagram at Jingwu Show. The next part will be out as soon as possible.